It's 2025 and it's been 7 years since Red Dead Redemption 2 was released and 6 years since the game was ported to PC. So I guess to celebrate those 6 years since the PC port of Red Dead Redemption 2 came out and to celebrate this new year, I'm gonna embark on a special military operation. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make this massive AAA title run smoothly on low-end machines, regardless of what it takes. And I have just the right PC for this operation. This is my Lenovo Legion Y5 training laptop. Before I get a thousand comments telling me what kind of a low end whack fix video is this when I'm using a freaking gaming laptop with a glowing keyboard, hear me out. This laptop is from 2017. I mean, it's older than the average Roblox and Fortnite player for God's sake. It has an HQ CPU! A cursed 4GB GTX 1050, which is actually more than adequate for Red Dead Redemption 2 without any low-end tweaks, as you can see here, but if I use the GTX 1050 for the rest of this video, this will be boring as heck. Instead, I'll be using the HQ CPU's integrated graphics, the Intel HD Graphics 630. And before I get even more comments from the other type of people, the sport kiddies with their mom's credit card who are gonna call me crazy or dumb for even thinking of running a colossal AAA game such as Red Dead Redemption 2 on measly Intel HD graphics when even my dedicated GTX 1050 is a crappy bottom tier e-waste GPU that should be liquidated from the face of earth for how bad it is, guess what? I don't give a single fuck. But hey, at least we have 16 gigs of RAM. So grab some popcorn and a pair of good glasses and let's begin. Now, in order to make Red Dead Redemption 2 not use the crappy e-waste GTX 1050 and instead use her i7's ungodly e-diarrhea Intel HD graphics 630, in the game settings, I need to change the output adapter option from 0 to 1. Oh look, now I get this warning telling me to update my Intel HD 630's drivers. I'm using the latest drivers available for it as of the making of this video by the way. Anyway, after restarting the game, I lower down the settings to as low as we are allowed to by default. I'm also using the Vulkan API because DirectX 12 sucks in this game and I'm using the HD 1280x720 resolution because, well, Intel HD graphics. And Red Dead Redemption 2 on Intel Potato Buggy Graphics runs, well, not too nicely as to be expected. To be fair, it is quite impressive that the Intel HD 630 are somehow managing double digit FPS at 720p since I expected like 5 FPS, but there is another option in the settings that gives more FPS. I'm talking about the resolution scale setting, which controls the rendering resolution while maintaining the native resolution of the interface. The lowest that you can set this option to is 0.5, so half of 720p or 360p, thus making Red Dead Redemption 2 look like a PS2 title. But hey, the FPS are now in the 20s, and it was running quite well, if by quite well you mean 20 FPS at 360p, until this factory guy who has a personal beef with Arthur shot him, and after respawning, the game crashed, with um, whatever this error means. So I restarted the game, explored the pixelated but still beautiful nature and Valentine with my fast boy Roach, and well, no crashing whatsoever. Sadly the FPS still dropped to the teens in Valentine, but do we know, I think it's perfectly playable. I'm used to even worse than this so I say this is perfect, but we always want more, so let's see what we can do to further crap file Red Dead Redemption 2. The configuration file of Red Dead Redemption 2 is located in Documents, Rockstar Games, Red Dead Redemption 2, Settings. The config file is the system.xml file, which, of course, you can open with notepad. In the config file, there are a bunch of stuff we can disable, such as water screen space reflections, snow glints, whatever that means, and a few other stuff. I forgot about the damage models. This did not really change anything in terms of the performance. In fact, the FPS are exactly the same as they were before disabling those stuff. You might have noticed that I didn't mention anything about disabling the shadows. That's because, sadly, you cannot disable them. I tried to change the shadow quality value to false or off, but it doesn't work. It's not like in GTA 5 where you can disable them 
game with a change of a single number. There is actually a mod which claims to disable almost all shadows, there are even pictures of it showing that it does indeed work, however I couldn't get this mod to work at all. Modding with Dead Redemption 2 is relatively easy actually, you only need script hook and Lenny's mod loader, however it doesn't work for every version of the game. And I'm saying this because a lot of people watching this video are probably using a pirated version of the game, so for this reason I won't be using any mods in this video. Video. But don't worry because there is more that you can do in the config file. Thankfully, just like GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption 2's config file also has LOD values. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun with them. For those who don't know what's LOD, LOD stands for level of detail, which is a technique used by video games to control the level of complexity in a 3D model by simplifying polygons and textures as they get further away from the camera to save on hardware resources. Just like with GTA 5's LOD values, these values can be set to negative values, with the lowest being minus 2 I think once again, although the way that they work is a little bit different compared to in GTA 5, especially the upper 2 values. Let me explain. Let's start with the bottom most LOD value, vehicle LOD bias, which does absolutely nothing. I mean, what vehicles do you expect from a game set in 1899? This isn't Blue Grand Auto. That LOD bias controls the distance at which the high poly models for the people and animals are rendered. Set it to minus 2 and congratulations! You've turned Red Dead Redemption 2 into a nice Minecraft mode. Not only does this work for Arthur and every other person in the game, but it also works for our fast boy Roach and the other horses and even other animals, like this cute dog for example. Look at him, isn't it a cute little HQ dog? Keep in mind that doing cutscenes the game will render the normal character models still. And if you think this isn't HQ enough, then keep watching because it's gonna become more HQ than the 7700HQ. Grass LOD controls the distance at which grass is rendered. Changing it from 0.5 to just 0 or minus 2 gets rid of the grass entirely. But by far the most drastic one is the LOD scale value, which controls the draw distance of literally everything. Now, you could change it from the default 0.75 to say 0.5 or 0.25 if you want a decent performance boost without crappifying the game drastically or if the situation requires desperate measures, you can set it to 0.1. Be very careful though, because if you set the LOD scale to just zeros during loading, the game will crash with an unknown error. Out of curiosity, I decided to see what happens if you change the LOD scale to 0.000001. Um, why is my character? And uh, almost everything else, aside from a few, aside from these two houses, why is it almost everything completely invisible? Yeah, I think I completely broke Red Dead Redemption 2 here. You can achieve the same thing by dropping the AOD scale value to minus 1 or minus 2, but um, yeah, don't do it. This was just for science. Anyway, with the LOD scale set to 0.1 and the pet LOD bias set to minus 2, the game looks quite awful. In fact, this looks like a weird experimental Wild West themed college indie project than Red Dead Redemption, but um, it's what it takes guys, if you want Red Dead Redemption 2 to be playable on your grandma's PC. Another thing to consider when lowering the LOD scale value is that doing so can cause the game to crash during some mission cutscenes, so for this reason, you might you might want to revert the LOD scale back to 0.75 just for the cutscenes that crash and then once again drop the LOD scale to 0.1 or 0.25 I guess. Also if you think that half of 720p aka 360p isn't low enough of a resolution for you, then let me show you how to drop it even further. The lowest resolution that Red Dead Redemption 2 allows by default is 1024x768 which is like the same thing as 1280x720 but stretched. But if you change the screen type to windowed or even better windowed borderless, then return to the config file and change the screen width and height values to the crappy resolution you want, you can make Red Dead Redemption 2 run at below 1024x768. 
Yeah, you can experiment a bit here, but be careful again, because for some reason, if you decide to use an extremely low resolution, or at least as it is in my case, you get another error. Hey yo, what the fuck? Anyway, I'm gonna go with the 500 at 12 by 384 resolution, or more accurately said, because the resolution scale half of 500 at 12 by 384. If you're using Windows Borderless, you can even drop your desktop resolution to make it like full screen. And with the glorious 256 by 192 resolution and the wonderful Minecraft visuals, we're now easily getting over 40 FPS even in Valentine. And I even saw as much as 60 FPS when outside of the town. I was going to call this a huge success until I ran into a huge problem. Remember the little error that I got in the very beginning? Well, that little error is striking again. Basically, around 10 minutes, or 5 minutes, or 1 minute, or even less than 30 seconds after loading into the game, I get the RGFX state error. You cannot tell when the game will crash. You could be playing a mission or just randomly exploring, and then the game suddenly crashes with this error. Yeah, that makes it a little bit more difficult to play. And it's not because of the super low settings, because I tried them on my dedicated GTX 1050 and not even once did I get the error. So the problem is with the Intel HD Graphics 630 here. And I tried literally every single solution on YouTube for this error. I tried deleting my pipeline cache files. I tried using the ignore pipeline cache command, but nothing. Still, I did eventually fix it. Guess what? I had to change the API from Vulkan to the crappy DirectX 12 one. Only then could I play the game without worrying about this error. Until the game and the entire operating system suddenly freeze with the sound still running and the only way out being to force shut down my laptop using the power button. So after Red Dead Redemption 2 nearly killed my Lenovo Legion Y520, I ultimately have to call this a failure. Only because Rockstar Games invented the RGFX state error and decided to exterminate every single Intel HD graphics computer running Red Dead Redemption 2 in DirectX 12. It's such a shame because it was running so well on the Intel HD 630, but then a stupid error has to ruin everything. Ugh. So, if anybody has an idea on how to fix the RGFX state error and what could be causing Windows 10 to freeze when trying to run Red Dead Redemption 2 on the Intel HD 630 in DirectX 12, write down below in the comment section. And if you're still here and have seen my community post about Red Dead Redemption 2 where I showed the game supposedly running at 100 FPS on Intel HD graphics, well, it's completely real. I just locked the frame rate to 25 using River Tuner and I used the Cool Duck app to achieve those 100 FPS. I used the integral scaling type as it's the least demanding one and I used Mode X4 frame generation of course with the resolution scale set to as low as possible. And just to show you guys that I was using the Intel HD graphics for the frame generation since yes, I am aware that I can also use the GTX 1050 for it in case somebody still thinks it's fake and um, yeah, it works, yay. We got Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 100 FPS before GTA 6, amazing. Happy New Year.